So thank you all for coming here um, to the talk today. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say a little bit about myself, but really I actually want to spend most of my time giving you value of how to get animal rights and veganism into the media. Um, as Claire mentioned, I've been a journalist for 15 years, um, from the UK originally, you can probably tell by the accent, and been in Australia since 2001. So I've written uh, opinion pieces, feature articles for Sydney Morning Herald, the ABC, News Limited, The Punch, as well as uh, a range of uh, niche and specialist media. Um, and I've been trained predominantly as a print journalist, but I've also appeared in, in mainstream uh, radio and TV on various issues, particularly social justice issues, from feminism to queer rights, and obviously animal rights and veganism, which I'm very, very uh, passionate about. So thank you for your, your warm welcome, Claire. So, what I'm going to do today is, obviously I can't condense 15 years of journalism into 45 minutes, much as I'd love to. So what I'm going to do today is give you a bit of a helicopter ride over some of the key issues that you need to know when you want to get animal rights or, or vegan issues into the media. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Now also I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit interactive because you know when someone stands at the front and, and, and they're talking and you're listening, you actually only remember a very small amount of what any speaker tells you, no matter how fabulous or engaging they are. But what, what is, is known is that if you, the more you interact and engage, you actually learn more. So is that okay that if I ask you to contribute, you can do that? This is the test, this is the test, do it now. Yes. yes, thank you very much, fantastic. I know you're all ready to learn some, some new things today, some of which might even be a little bit uncomfortable. Is that okay? Is that all right? Um, I've been told that diplomacy is not my strength. Um, I am working on it. Sometimes that works to my advantage, but um, I do believe in kind of telling it as it is, and particularly with something like this, because I want you to go out there to put yourself out there and get animal rights and vegan issues into the media. You know, you are my people, okay? You're my tribe, you know, as, as animal activists and, and vegans. Um, I want you to go out there and spread the word. So I'm gonna explain some do's and don'ts um, when approaching the media. Um, to, so that you've got something to, to go on with, um, like literally when you, you go from here. So like, obviously I can't cover everything. Um, I do do some media training for social change activists, which I can mention briefly at the end. But I really want to focus on giving you some value today. So, who here wants to get animal rights and veganism into the media? We should see every hand up, because if not, there's some really cool acts going on over there. <laughs> That's great. So tell me why. Why do you want to get animal rights and veganism into the media? Talk to me, guys. Why do you want to get it? Why? To spread the word. To what? To, yeah. to spread the word. Fabulous. Yes. What was your name? Change things. To change things. Absolutely. Gain for sure. knowledge. Gain knowledge. For sure. So that's really important, what, what, what you've all said there, is it's one of the reasons, one of the key reasons to get these issues into the media is that it not only influences people one-on-one, -on -one, so the people that are reading the magazine or uh, listening to the radio or <clears throat> watching the TV segment, you're also influencing the thinking on a cultural level. Um, if you look at something like the marriage equality um, thing that's been happening, uh, the majority of media coverage on marriage equality now is really quite positive. I mean, sure, there's a few you know homophobic you know journalists here and there, but overall, in general, the you know people are very supportive of it. Whereas if you look 20, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, I would say it really wasn't the case. So things do happen slowly, and I know as animal activists, you know, we want things to happen much more, more quickly than they do. Um, but the media is, is such a good place to or a tool to use in order to change that thinking and to get our message across. When I say I'm talking about um, media, I'm not talking about social media, so I'm talking about more, I guess, traditional forms of media, so radio, TV, uh, magazines, newspapers, but also online um, and some other forms of media which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, another reason for, for getting uh, your issues or using the media as a tool, as an activist, is that it's free publicity. Like, it doesn't cost you anything. Instead of paying to place an ad, which may or may not get you the result that you, you want, um, it's free. So that's a, you know, a kind of no-brainer as to, to why you would use that. Being in the media also gives you credibility as opposed to putting an ad in. So if you think when you see an ad or you hear an ad or you see an ad, 
you kind of know that of course you know the person saying what they're saying is of course they're going to say that because they paid for an ad and, and, and it's them kind of spruiking their own product or in this case cause whereas when you're featured in the media it somehow gives and it's right or wrong um, it, it just kind of gives this extra credibility it's like this third party independence of oh you know since I've been quoted in the media they must be kind of important or, or noteworthy right Another reason is the more you are in the media, the more that you're featured in the media, the more media you'll actually get because mainstream media read, watch and listen to niche media and vice versa. So local media also check in to what's happening on a national and an international scale. So they all feed off one another. So what happens is the more you're featured, you then become the go-to expert on your particular topic. So whether it's animal rights or animal welfare as a, a big uh, cause or vegan issues or you might be a rabbit specialist, you, know, you might be someone that um, uh, has a particular interest in the welfare of rabbits or, or hens and chickens, etc. So you become the go-to expert and what happens then is what you really want to happen is the media starts to chase you. So rather than you having to work really hard to actually get media coverage, it's the journalists, we start chasing you. So whenever there's kind of you know, an animal related story, you know, we have to think, right, who do we talk to? Who are the experts? Who, who can we quote? And you want to be that person that we go, oh, yes, so-and-so, that's the rabbit guy or the chicken lady, um, and we'll contact you. So those are some of the reasons um, for, for being in the media, and I, I hope you can see how important it is. So if we look at what is the media, what do you guys think of, like, when you, this is a talk, you come to this talk on how to get animal rights and veganism into the media, what do you think of when I say the media? Just shout some things out. TV. TV newspapers. newspapers, yes. Radio. Facebook. Facebook. Oh, that's social media, but yes, for sure. What else? Radio. Radio. Cool. So that's all that, absolutely right. But what I want to express to you is sometimes when I talk to both activists and also business people for that matter is when they think of the media, they think, um, you know, national, international, you know, Sydney Morning Herald, want to be on Sunrise, etc. And that's all great. And I absolutely encourage you to do that. But I just want to really impress upon you the breadth of media that is now available today. It certainly wasn't available when I trained as a journalist back in the, the 90s. Um, it was very much... Um, pretty much, you know, the mainstream media. You obviously you've got your niche media, such as health publications, environmental publications and radio. But the media landscape has changed exponentially since, um, you know, since then. We've got this whole wave of new media. We've got podcasts that, you know, people can download on iTunes. You've got things like blog talk radio, hugely popular, international. You know, you can really go global. Um, so the, the an alternative media, student publications, I really urge you not to discount some of these, what you might think of as, you know, smaller media, because the aim of us as activists is to change people's hearts and minds. And however you can get to people, I'd really urge you to go for it, because sometimes you can actually make more of a difference by targeting a particular uh, specialist outlet than trying to make a big hit with, with national media. So I just want to throw that out to you to, so that you really get an idea of the kinds of media out there and also if you're, if you're maybe a bit nervous about you know maybe going on something big like Sunrise or a current affair or you know the Australian you can actually start small you can start local um, and, and get some practice or you know work with people from blog talk radio or some of these alternative outlets to really um, build up your your practice and your media skills okay so I'm going to talk to you now about how, um, how to get into the media. Now, like I said, this is a huge subject and I go into it in much more depth in, in my actual trainings, but I'm give, going to give you some key things today um, to be aware of. So what I'm going to start with is some things that you need to be aware of before you even approach um, journalists or the media. There's actually a lot of, this is the really important stuff, there's a lot of preparatory work you need to do before you even start to uh, approach journalists. So, and this is where, remember I said at the beginning, I, I was going to say some things and, and something might be a little bit uncomfortable in terms of, I will give you some home truths. And one of them is that journalists don't care about your cause. Okay, now I'll qualify that by saying on a personal level they may well do. There's lots of journalists out there that are very passionate about certain causes, including animal, animal rights and, and, and vegan issues. However, when we've got our professional hats on, not our personal ones, 
we don't care about your story. That is not front of mind for us because as journalists, our job is to provide value for our audiences. Okay, so I really want to make sure you, you, you take that away with you. Um, we're not here to give you free publicity. So never, whenever you're approaching a journalist, never contact them and say, oh, I've got, I'm involved in this really cool cause and whatever, um, and I'd like some publicity for it. Don't ever say that to a journalist. It really pisses us off. Um, because getting publicity for your cause, that's the work of publicists or PR agencies that you can hire to do that. As journalists, what journalists want is to provide value and we want stories. And we want stories that do three things. One, to inform, to entertain, or to inspire, okay? So that's to inform, entertain, and inspire our audiences. And if we can get stories that do all three, that is gold, that is really, really cool. So if you can come up with stories and offer those to journalists that hit all of those three sweet spots, um, you're gonna do very well, so. So we want stories. And the other thing that I want to tell you is, and again, this may make you feel uncomfortable, and I only say that because it made me uncomfortable when I heard it, is that as animal activists and as vegans, we are selling our cause, okay? We are actually in the marketing business. We might say, oh yes, we're activists, we're altruistic activists, but actually, you're in the sales and marketing business, and you need to sell your cause. We are selling it all the time, whether you're having a conversation with your family, or friends, or your work colleagues, you are selling how you present your issues uh, that, you're, that are important to you um, impacts on how the other person, how well the other person will buy what you're selling. Now, I know some, for some people, the idea of you know selling your cause might be a bit uncomfortable because sometimes selling is linked with money, and money is evil and bad because the bad corporates do it and do bad things with it. And if you're sitting here, if anyone here is sitting there thinking that, I get it, like I really do get it because I, I was there. But I guess what I want to say to you today is you need to get over that, okay? And just make sure that you know you are an ambassador and you do have to sell. Um, so, stories. Um, when you're approaching journalists with a story, what you really need to do, what we're looking for is stories about individuals, like humans or individual animals in this case. So I'd really encourage you, whatever issue, particular issues that you're involved in or any groups that you might be part of or if you're independent activists, um, really might have a look and see you know, what human or animal interest stories can you come up with. Because when we talk about things in terms of large numbers, say for example, let's take the live export, um, the big campaign that's been happening. When you say, you know, X amount of X million animals are, you know, put on these ships and all these terrible things happen to them, yes, it has an impact and, 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 and you know, people kind of think, oh, that's terrible. But when you actually take one animal, which was Animals Australia did so well, they took, they, they, they took Tommy. Remember Tommy's story? It was like, this is Tommy, he is where he's from, this is what happened to him. It really gets people, like it just kind of gets you in the gut and, and in the heart because we can connect as, as individuals, as humans, we just connect more one-to-one -one than we do to kind of vague statistics, even though they're bigger in numbers. And it's the same with people as well, you know, when you hear that, you know, um, hundreds of millions of people are dying of starvation, you know, we kind of go, oh, that's really sad. But you put a human and individual face on it and you just connect, we really connect. So just have a look at the, the particular causes that you're into and think about the kinds of stories that you could come up with that would be able to give you some good media exposure. When you're um, giving stories to the media or when you're preparing stories to the media, what you need is a hook to hang the story on. So I can probably best describe what a hook is by giving you an example. Some of you might have seen that Susie Spoon's Vegetarian Butcher was recently featured on 9MSM, right? The hook for that was World Vegan Day, which was Friday. So the hook was, a hook is a reason. It's a reason for a journalist to run a particular story. Because often when you're getting into the media, you're looking to get the right story to the right journalist at the right time. So it requires you to really think laterally and creatively about different kind of uh, hooks that you can create. Now, there are lots of hooks. There's absolutely loads and loads of them. I don't have time, obviously, to cover them in this short presentation, but I'm going to go through some of them here so that you've got something to, to go away thinking with. 
One of the um, really good hooks is, as I mentioned, uh, World Vegan Day. So it's special days. You know how there's lots of special days. There's World Vegan Day, there's World Animal Day, World Farm Animal Day. And they don't even have to be animal days. Um, you can tap into something like National Cupcake Day. And what you can do there is, you know, if you're someone who likes to create things in the kitchen, for example, you can make some really amazing, really cool, funky cup vegan cupcakes and you know, photograph them and get some media coverage that way. It may be national coverage like Susie Spoon or it could even be local um, stuff, especially if you've got a good picture. And I'll talk about pictures in a minute because they're another hook. Um, but you can also create your own day. So as well as tapping into existing days, you can make up a day because all these days that, that started up, um, somebody had to do it. You know, somebody just made it up. They're, they're not official. They're only official because someone said it's, you know, blah, blah, blah day. So you could create International Rabbit Awareness Day and say it's going to be on this day every year. You send your press release and you pitch to the journalist. We don't know any different. You know, you create a really simple blog which is very cheap to set up, you know, with World uh, International Rabbit Awareness Day. You send it out, we're like, oh, cool, okay, it's International Rabbit Awareness Day. We do a story. So you can create your own days. Um, the other thing that you can also do, and so that's one hook, is create is special days, hanging on on special days and creating your own days. Um, another hook is awards, and um, some of you here may know Kathy Devine. Um, Kathy's a lovely vegan animal activist, author, writer, and she created um, something called. They used to be called Vegans Are Cool Awards. They're now called Vegan of the Year Awards. And what that does, and, and she's done that very inexpensively. Like you don't have to, you know, spend a lot of money doing this. You can basically just say, right, we're going to create these awards, and we're going to these are the people we're going to award them to, and get people to vote. What that does is not only can you get some media exposure as the creator of the awards, but what happens, like, when you give someone an award, like, what's your name, David? Um, so if I, if, you know, ring you up and say, hey David, I'm going to give you this, you know, Vegan of the Year award. Once you've done the yay, what's the first thing, like, you want to do? Yeah, you want to show everyone, exactly, so you can show the media, tell the media. And I'm not talking about ringing up the producers of Sunrise and going, hey, I got Vegan of the Year award, do a story. Um, but you, this is where local media really comes in. This is the kind of stuff that local media loves. So local press, TV, radio, they like the local hero thing. So you can contact them and say, look, I got given this award. Here's why, these are the cool things I did. Are you interested in running um, a story? So that's a, another hook is award. So have a think about, you know, how you could maybe do that. Um, I know some people, I don't know how many people here are, maybe you're volunteers for, as part of a bigger group or if you're independent or solo activists. So some of these are going to be more relevant than others. So I'm just giving you some stuff to, to work with. I mentioned pictures. Pictures are a really good hook. Now, back in the day when I trained as a journalist, this was kind of pre-email and internet and everything. And um, with photos, particularly for print, you have to have what's called high resolution images. So I remember I used to work for the, um, the gay and lesbian media here in Australia, and I did an article on queer uh, activists, and one of the people I interviewed was Mark Pearson, um, who's the uh, head of animal liberation. Uh, New South Wales and I said to her, I did the interview and I said to him, right Mark, have you got um, a photo of you ideally with an animal, you know, a farmed animal like a cow or a sheep or a hen or something and he said no, you know, he said we haven't got anything suitable. Um, so we actually, the magazine that I, I worked for, we actually had to pay, I think it was either Fairfax or News Limited, um, to, uh, we had to pay their picture agency a fee to use this really lovely image of Mark with a, a rescued battery hen. The days of that are all over now because we've got our smartphones now that take really good quality photos, you know, like high resolution, print quality. So I'd really, really encourage you to take as many photos as you can, both of people involved in your campaign but also of animals. And the reason I say that is sometimes, particularly with local media, uh, local papers for example, they don't necessarily have the space to run a full article, but they'll often have time for, a uh, space rather, for a what's called a picture caption story. So they have a really cool image, and then maybe two or three lines in a caption. It's still getting your issues out there. It's still getting animal issues out there and or vegan issues um, out there. So uh, take lots of pictures, keep them safe, file them on your uh, your computer so that you can pull them out at a moment's notice. 
Um, because you can also offer journalists that when you're pitching to them. I'll talk briefly uh, towards the end about uh, how you do that. Um, but in the meantime, just take lots of images wherever you are. Cats, dogs, farmed animals, the lot. Just get photographing, okay? Um, the other main hook that I would say, like I said, there's lots and lots of them. The other main one that I'll talk about today is responding. Uh, responding to what's going on already in the media or what's going on in popular culture. So trends and issues that are kind of hot. Now I know it can be a bit depressing sometimes to, you know, read the news or listen to the news because it's like, you can feel quite disempowered, you know, about all this stuff that's going on and it's, it's not so great. But what I'd invite you to do is start consuming media now with a different filter. So look, listen um, and, and watch uh, through a different filter. So you're actually, what you're looking for is how can I weave an animal issues or a vegan issues based story as a response to this or in reaction to or in, in relation to this issue. Now, it's not going to happen with every story, so I'm not suggesting you look at every single news story in the Sydney Morning Herald and then start pitching journalists with an animal angle because you'll drive us crazy. But there's going to be certain uh, topics and issues and trends that are going to quite easily lend themselves. So if I give you an example, suppose there was an article uh, or, you know, a feature on the media, radio and TV that, and I'm just making this up, this isn't a real report, but just something that says that the number of Australians having heart attacks each year has gone up by 50%. That's a perfect opportunity for, say, a vegan organisation, say like Vegan Australia, that's a new organisation here in Australia, to respond to. And what I advise when it comes to those kind of health issues, particularly when it's studies and reports that are quoting experts and doctors, etc., what I'd advise is um, aligning yourself with some experts, so nutri vegan naturopaths, nutritionists, health coaches, um, and putting out a, a media release in response to and in alignment with the expert. So that way, again, you're getting the vegan issue in. Yes, you're coming at it from a health perspective. Um, ooh, go away, I'm vegan, why are you eating me? Um, you know, you, you're, you're responding to, to something and you're getting the vegan issue in um, from a health front because with something like veganism, you've got the health issues, the ethical issues and the environmental issues and really work that, you know. Yes, I know a lot of us here are passionate about animal rights and welfare so we want to get it in from an ethical perspective but really the more people that are, you know, eating plant-based, um, the better. So really think laterally and creatively about that. Um, I mentioned Kathy Devine earlier um, who created the awards. Kathy also did something very clever where she responded to a call out from a mainstream um, journalist who works on the big women's magazines and they were wanting to speak to women or get little comments from women who looked much younger than they actually were. So it was for a kind of, you know, um, anti-aging kind of uh, feature. And Kathy responded to that. She said, hey, I'm 37. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. She has given me permission to share. Well, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing her age. She said to the journalist, hey, I'm 37, but I'm told I look in my early 20s. I'm the author of this book, and um, I attribute the fact that I look this young to my vegan diet. Sure enough, Kathy got featured. So in this, I think it was Women's Health and Fitness magazine, national media, national exposure. That feature was going to run anyway, but this way, you know, Kathy got in there, Kathy Devine, vegan diet. It implants the suggestion in people's minds. So, the, you know, these are really good opportunities uh, for you to, it's kind of almost slipping in animal issues or vegan issues in a roundabout way and, and getting that into the public consciousness, because that's how we change. Um, public thinking is to get people associating the word vegan, for example, with something positive. Um, you know, so looking younger, or you know, feeling fitter, being fitter and healthy and strong. Um, again, with food, you know, this is why it was great to see Susie Spoon feature, because, you know, pictures of those delicious foods, so people look at it and go, wow, vegan food? That's vegan? Instead of, you know, a limp piece of lettuce and a bit of unflavoured tofu. So it's all about, you know, changing people's um, thinking. So those are the kind of some of the hooks. Does this make sense? I just want to check in with you. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm trying to get in as much value as I can to you. Does this make sense of, of the kinds of hooks? Like I said, there's loads more and I do go into them in, in more depth in my training. Um, but, you know, these are some things you can go away with already and start to think about, you know, how you can um, get animal issues into the media. 
So the next stage, if you like, and how am I doing for time? Has anyone, I haven't got a clock or a watch on here. 1.15, okay, all right, that's good. I wanna try and, uh, okay, thank you. I just wanna make sure I try and leave a bit of uh, room at the end if you want any questions. Um, so the next step, so once you've got your hook, uh, you've got, you know, like you think a cool story that you're ready to approach and you've decided what media you're going to approach. So remember earlier how I talked about the different types of media. So certain stories are going to be right for certain media and not right for other media. So something might be, you know, more appropriate for local, um, media and something might be more appropriate for, for national um, or for a niche publication. So you've got your story, you've got your angle, you've got your hook. So the next step is to send your pitch and press release to various journalists. Now here's another don't. Never send a pitch, and I'll explain what a pitch is in a moment, to a journalist beginning, Dear Editor, because it, it's really irritating. What it says to us as journalists is, you haven't bothered to research the publication, to even bother finding out you know, the editor's name. And nine times out of 10, it won't even be the editor. If it's big national publication, for example, they've got section editors, they've got you know, news editors, features editors. You need to find out the right person to contact. And there's, and there's no rocket science to this. The easy way to find that out is you actually call the media outlet and you say who looks after you know this particular uh, thing you get the name of the journalist and you make sure you spell the name right so you put dear Katrina so just instantly for me as a journalist it's like oh I feel good you know you've you've, you've bothered to show you're being uh, very person personalized you're personalizing your pitch to me so a press release is it's kind of like it's your story it's almost you writing the story with a headline and again I don't have time to go into crafting a press release that's a whole kind of thing in itself but basically it's a headline, an introduction, and then lots of the different paragraphs with quotes, and there's some other stuff that goes at the end. Um, and the pitch, the pitch is the email, or it used to pitch sometimes on the phone. I'd say the majority of journalists nowadays, we like to be pitched by email. So that's the just, it's almost like a little summary. It's the key points of your release. Then the aim is to get our attention. So it's to make us curious. And the one really important thing I want you to get from this is the headline is the most important part of your press release because nowadays most of um, press releases they'll be sent by email so they're going to appear in the subject header right so journalists are super busy like I said because the media landscape has changed what's also happened is a lot of the big national media for example <coughs> excuse me have got rid of a lot of staff but, and they haven't replaced them, so what's happened is there are now, the journalists nowadays have got a hell of a lot more work to do than they used to, and far less resource, fewer resources to do it. Um, so they're pretty stressed, okay? They get hundreds of emails every single day, and if yours is confusing, or it's rambling, um, or it's full of jargon, or it's just boring, then guess what's gonna happen? Delete, exactly, we're just gonna hit the delete button. You know how it is, you probably all get lots and lots of emails. Unless something's grabbed you in literally a few seconds, that is all you've got, a few seconds to grab our attention, we're gonna hit the delete button. So you need to make sure your headline is punchy, engaging, because what you want to do, you want me to then read the next bit. Okay, you want me to read the introduction, which is a little summary. You want me to read your pitch and your media release, right? <laughs> Also, when you're sending the pitch and the press release by email, um, again, there's, there's other things to, to do, but I would say the key thing that I want you to take away from that is don't send a whole bunch of attachments. So don't put a whole load of images as attachments because it's unlikely to get through and it just clogs up the email system. Um, when you send your press release, what you need to do is make sure that you copy and paste, you create it in Word, okay? You copy and paste the text from the Word document and then put it into the body of the email. It's really important if you do that, if you just send a pitch and say, please find attached the press release, we're likely to press the delete button again because you're making us work, you're making us double click. And I know it sounds a bit kind of arrogant and deeperish, like, oh my God, you've got to you know, double click, but it's time. So, but what I do recommend is you do also attach the Word document because what happens is once we've looked at your pitch in the body of our email and your press release and we think, this is 
actually quite cool. I quite like this. I'm going to take that to my editorial meeting. That's when we want to print it out. We will print, we'll, we'll open the Word document because it's just nicer to print out a Word document uh, than as, uh, an email. Okay. So that's just a few little tips on when you're getting to the stage of actually sending through your pitch and your media release. Um, the next step in that would be, suppose, ideally you would hear, you would hear straight away, a journalist would go, yep, yeah, this is great, cool, and they'll contact you. Um, doesn't always happen. Sometimes, and I'd say, look, probably in the majority of the time it's because it's not the, quite the right story right now, so it may, but other times it could be, it's a maybe, but it's fallen to the bottom of our email inbox. So there are ways of following up with journalists and there are ways not to follow up with journalists. The way not to follow up with a journalist is to pick them up, pick up the phone and telephone them and go, hello, I sent a press release two days ago. I'm just ringing to see if you received it. Right, that drives journalists crazy because if you can imagine, I've said we get hundreds of press releases every day. Can you imagine if every single person rang up and said, oh, I'm just checking you got it. We'd never get any work done, right? Um, and I've, you know, in 15 years of being a journalist, I've had that happen so much. I've had individuals ring up. I've even had professional publicists and PR agencies do that. It's so annoying. But there are ways of following up um, with journalists that are a smart way of doing it. Don't have time to go into that today, because like I said, I'm giving you a helicopter ride over this today. It's something that I go into more in depth in my trainings. But don't do that anyway. I've given you something to, to not do. Um, and then the, the final step, I guess, in the uh, in getting actually featured in the media is doing the interview itself. So journalists will contact you and go, yep, yeah, this sounds great. Um, I want to do an interview with you. Um, now, again, this is a whole kind of training in itself. Um, and I don't have time to touch in on that. But there, there's ways of doing media or speak, handling journalists so that you get your message across because journalists we can be tricky and sometimes we like to lead people off down our own little path and have our own agenda right and you might have seen you know, some of our politicians being well and truly shafted by um, by some journalists so there are ways to do that so that you're ensuring that you're getting your message across in a way that you're not coming across as aggressive and you are actually answering journalists questions but you're bringing <coughs> the topic back always to uh, to the to your your cause and your message okay so look like I said that was a pretty much a, a fast helicopter ride over how to um, get animal rights and veganism into the media um, I've mentioned that I do have um, some training that I do some live training I'm also preparing some online training if anyone would like to um, be put on my database, go on my database to be kept up to date with that. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. I'll pass this round here. Um, while that's going round, um, has anyone got any questions um, that you'd like to know? Yes, what's your name? Uh, Rico. Rico, what's your question, Rico? Uh, actually, a two-pronged question. Okay, two-pronged question. Yeah. Come here. Why do you sometimes look on websites and you see a list of uh, reporters and the editorial as well? So Rico's saying you're, I'm just going to repeat yeah. it as we go so everyone can hear because we've got people out the back. So Rico's saying that you go to some websites and you've got lists of reporters and, and editors, yeah? Yeah, so uh, is it a good idea to find out what uh, the reporter's uh, known for and, and direct it to them rather than sending something to the editorial address. Fantastic question, really lovely question, thank you. So Rico saying, uh, is it best to look at the types of things that certain reporters and journalists cover, uh, rather than just, and sending something specifically to them, rather than just sending something generally to the main editorial email address? And the answer to that I say in the majority of cases, absolutely yes. The more you can personalize and go for individual journalists, the better. Because if you, and that's another thing I guess I should mention is when you're uh, it's one of the things that we cover when you're looking to get into the media is make sure that you read watch and listen to it so if you decide you want to get on sunrise make sure you watch a few episodes you don't have to watch it all the time day in day out but make sure you are familiar with the media you want to get in like I say I can't the times when I was working I used to work for as I mentioned for the gay media and I was editing a women's magazine I would get pitches that were completely irrelevant for my target market it's really annoying and sometimes you can get yourself blacklisted from that because if you keep doing it, we're just going to delete the button. 
So yes, absolutely. Um, look at what journalists cover, and particularly look at you know journalists that have covered animal issues or vegan issues favourably, um, and you know approach them. So yes, absolutely. Can I do the second part? You can do the second part. Yes, uh, go for it. The second part was what if you want to have a particular article in mind rather than you know a story that you that a, that a reporter might write about? Mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to? Okay, so Rico's asked now if you have a particular article that, you, that you've written, are you, are you talking yeah. about? Um, if, if you have an article that you've uh, written or that you want to write to go in, as opposed to getting a reporter or a journalist to do a story, um, what I would say there is you're, you're then coming from the perspective of a, a freelance writer. Um, so there are ways, again, the, of, of pitching the, the publication or the, uh, uh, yeah, it's probably more going to be publication in, or online. Online is probably better what I would say is if you're a professional writer and a professional journalist you may get paid so when I wrote for Sydney Morning Herald the ABC yes I got paid even for opinion pieces um, but what's happening in the media landscape now is a lot of public a, a lot of media outlets don't want to pay their writers so if they can get an expert to write they see that that's exposure so it really depends on you know if you're just wanting to get in there your best bet would be to look at particularly online Sydney Morning Herald online only. I don't think they, they don't generally, they'll pay certain writers and journalists, but mostly they don't. So that would be somewhere if you just want to get something in, then approach particularly the opinion um, piece. Those are quite good things to get in. Um, so yeah, you would just pitch as a freelance writer. Um, just make sure that, you know, what it, it still comes back to the book. So if it's, you know, responding to something that's going on or a particular trend. Um, when I did, a, I think it was one of my first op-eds for Sydney Morning Herald. It was um, it was based on I think Voiceless were launching this book, the first law book in Australia, and uh, so you know I did kind of that was my hook and got it in. So still use the hook, but yes, you can certainly pitch from that perspective as well. Let's answer your question. Great. Any other questions? Oh, are we all just melting here? I've got the Wicked Witch of the East here. I'm going to go into a puddle. <laughs> yes. What's your name? I'm Helen. Helen. So Helen saying you told us how not to follow up. What's one way to follow up? One way, uh, to, uh, a good way to, to follow up is so you've sent in your pitch, you've sent in your release, you haven't heard anything. So rather than, as I say, ring up and just go, I'm checking you've got the press release, what you can do, it's a little bit crafty, because what you really are doing is checking that they've got the press release and are you interested, is actually to offer some extra information. So you can contact the journalist and say, hey, I sent you this press release a couple of days ago. There's actually been a little bit of a development or I've got a little bit of extra information for you. And here it is. Now, what that does, if they're not interested, they're not interested. But if they are interested and they've just forgotten, they're going to go, oh, God, yeah, that was a quite a good story. I remember that now. And now there's this extra information. So if they, um, if they are interested, then they might well um, run your piece or run your story. Okay, does that help? Cool. How am I doing for time, Claire? I've got what? A few minutes. A few minutes? All right, a few minutes. Any, any other questions or comments? No? Okay, so um, I did mention that um, I do do some media training for social change activists. I think the thing is still pulling fast around. Um, I'll also leave it at the information tent. So it just means if you want to go on my database to find out um, when I'm next doing a training or for any other kind of information about media training for social change activists, um, you'll be the first to know. And I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming. Like I said, I know it's really hot sitting in the, and listening in this tent and literally go forth and do great things you know don't be afraid like we have to speak our truth um, and it's up to you we're all animal ambassadors the media is a fantastic tool to use to get the animal rights and vegan message out there so I really encourage you to do that thank you for coming today and enjoy the rest of this wonderful day thank you